The Bruins opening the regular season tomorrow night against the Capitals and one of the biggest storylines entering this year is the lingering wait over a potential contract extension for one David Pasternak. General Manager Don Sweeney said yesterday that the sides continue to talk but there's no timetable on a potential deal. Might not be time to worry just yet though. Let's get to carrying the low by the Chevy Silverado. 985 the sports hub Ty Anderson reporting this today. Quote, quote, multiple sources have told the sports hub that the Bruins have been willing to go extremely high with Pasternak on his next deal. One source even indicates that the Bruins have offered what would be the richest contract in team history, meaning an offer that topped the $9.5 million cap hit franchise defenseman Charlie McAvoy landed in 2021. All right, let's bring in DJ Bean here as we uh, begin the daily thread. And Dave, nice to see you. Uh, thanks for joining hi, us. Hi, hi. Uh, as far as hi, David Pasternak goes, how do you feel about Don Sweeney being able to get a deal done with 88? And uh, do you think this lingers on into, oh, I guess it's probably going to have to get into the regular season. Well, first off, that's good reporting by Ty to get that the Bruins are willing to go over nine and a half million dollars. That's honestly, I think the most information anybody's gotten as far as money goes. We do know that this deal, if it is signed, will be eight years. Pasternak's 26. He's going to walk in, want to lock in for a long time. And if the Bruins are paying big money, they're going to want to have him for as long as they can have him because they're the prime years of his career. Nine and a half, while that's a good number to know right now, is definitely too low. And obviously, it's too low because the deal hasn't been signed. But let's start with the nine and a half. At least we know that that's been reported. That might be what the Bruins use as a benchmark because Charlie McAvoy makes that much and he's the highest paid player on the team. But Pasternak is worth so much more. And the more relevant comps for Pasternak are guys, other forwards, other scorers like Johnny Gaudreau. And the last offer that he got from the Flames was 10 and a half times eight. So nine and a half, it's good to know the Bruins are willing to go there, but they definitely need to go, I would say, quite a bit higher. I would say that if you really want to start getting serious, it's got to be at 10 and a half, something like that. But I share your light concern that it seems Pasternak's going to go into a walk year. I, I checked in with the source today on the Pasternak talks and got still grinding, not much to report. That's not amazing. Maybe things can change quickly over the next 24 hours, but you know as well as anyone else, Tom, the Bruins typically don't take guys that they're going to keep into walk years. Krug was... It was like a red flag that he hadn't re-signed. They end up letting him walk without much of an offer. So at least they're talking, and we know that there's some sort of dialogue. But if I'm a Bruins fan, I'd feel a lot better if something can get wrapped up over the next 24 hours. Both sides, though, indicate at this point that's not happening. Okay, but at least it sounds like Pasternak's open to you know, signing something within the regular season. You know, it's not like one of those deadlines where, you know, we're, we, you know, we got to get something done before the start of the season because I don't want to deal with this once the season gets started. So it sounds like that's still a possibility, which is why I'm not totally discouraged by what's going on. I want to throw a number at you, and it's not 10 and a half, it's 40 and a half. And that would be the uh, over-under for goals scored by David Pasternak this season. And I'm going to say if he's a 10 and a half million dollar player, given what his skill set is, he's got to go over that number. DJ, will he go over? Yeah, and that's about, I, I want to say that that's what Gaudreau had last year. He had 40, 41, 42, something like that. After really regularly being in the high 20s, not, not as potent a goal scorer as David Pasternak, I don't think that he necessarily needs to prove anything this season, unless, I don't know, suppose, stay healthy, because if he does stay healthy and he's starting off on the checks mix with, with I'm sorry, Zaka and David Krejci, he's going to score a lot of goals. I don't think that he necessarily needs to hit 40 41 goals because it's something we know he can do and at 26 years old there still is more where that came from now if you want to work that into if this is Patrice Bergeron's last year if this is David Krejci's last year if this is their real last kick at the can which we say every freaking year then yeah you need a monster year out of David Pasternak you need a monster performance out of out of uh, Taylor Hall out of Brad Marchand once he gets healthy out of Jake DeBrusque you do need guys to go off and Pasternak should be near the top of that list all right let's take a look at some other Bruins futures because DJ I just want to talk gambling with you okay if that's all right good uh, they are heavily Party. favored to make the playoffs at minus 190 okay so they're more likely to make the playoffs than not according to the books uh, their over under for points is 95 and a half there's a couple long shots in here as well which is uh, plus 1,000 to win the Atlantic Division that's fourth on that list and they're plus 1,300 just to make the Stanley Cup final never mind win it the one that sticks out to me there 
is the 95 and a half points. It's actually yes. 96 and a half in some other books. They they got 107 last year. Surprisingly, I, I was actually didn't realize they got that high last year. But they shouldn't drop off by 10 points. I, I understand you don't have McAvoy, you don't have Marshan. You know you're, you're down a couple bodies to start the year here. No Grizzly, but they shouldn't drop off by 10, right? No, I'm jumping all over that. If um, I, I think the Bruins are better this year than they were last year. And I know that there are so many ifs baked into that. I mentioned Brad Marchand earlier. What's he? How's Taylor Hall as he works his ba way back from injury? Is he going to be rusty to start the season? What's Charlie McAvoy going to be? There's a lot of ifs and injury concerns. And even you want to talk about how much worse is Patrice Bergeron or David Krejci as they do decline as players. I know that all those things are baked in there, but just look at the roster. I felt this way the day that they brought those old guys back. The roster is so much better than it was last year because you do have a really strong top six. And yes, there are better top sixes in the NHL, but this is the best one that you've had in a few years. So if I'm betting on anything on that list, you're right, Tom. You take the over on 95 and a half points. You take the over on 96 and a half points. Even if that were 99 and a half points, I would jump on that. Wow. Oh, Bruins are a playoff that. team. Make no mistake. Okay. Well, you are saying that they're minus 190 to make the playoffs. So you kind of got to, you got to lie, uh, lay $19 to, uh, to make $10 in that situation. I will say I, it's going to come down to the young guys too. I mean, you're bringing up how strong the top six is, but so much was made about the young guys, you know, not maybe responding to Bruce Cassidy. And so much has been made about the young guys just reflecting on how much they've enjoyed Jim Montgomery as their head coach. It's kind of a little bit of put up or shut up here, especially at the start of the season when you're undermanned. Yeah, the Bruins don't have that many good young guys, though. So <laughs> honestly, this is going to be another year of bang on. Unless you want to talk about players who have kind of reached their mid-20s, like Brandon Carlo is probably looking to... I don't want to bounce back is mean, but his career has maybe taken a little bit of a dip the last couple of years. He was a monster when they made that, uh, that run to the Stanley cup final. So you want more from him. Obviously Jake DeBrusque would like to have some stability over the course of an 82 game season. So maybe those guys are a little better. And I think that's the most you can ask for because famously, I, don't, I know that Cam Neely doesn't want to hear this. The Bruins don't draft well.